Hey there guys, welcome back to the Modern JavaScript Crash Course. In this video, we'll be learning about all the different data types in JavaScript. Now, this video won't be the most exciting video on the Crash Course. However, it is important that we do cover this topic, even on a basic level. If you guys are new here and like the content, don't forget to like and subscribe and make sure you turn on notifications so you never miss an update. Now, data types is a very important element in programming. This is because a value in JavaScript is always of a certain data type. And to be able to operate variables in JavaScript, it has to know something about the type. Now, as you can see here, we have quite a few different data types. And the best thing to do in this situation is just to categorize them, which just makes it a lot easier for us to learn. So as you can see to our left, we have seven primitive data types. We have number, string, boolean, big int, undefined, null, and symbol. Now for non-primitive data types, you can see we only have one data type and that is the object, which can be things like functions, arrays, or objects themselves. Now don't be confused by any of this JavaScript jargon at the moment. We will go over each of these primitives and non-primitives in this video so you guys can feel confident in data types moving forward. So the first question you're probably wondering is what the difference is between primitive and non-primitive data types is. And the clue really is in the name. So primitive here means simple or basic. And the reason these data type falls into the primitive category is because the data they hold are single and simple. They're also immutable, which means we can't change their values. And these values have no properties. Now, non-primitives, on the other hand, are essentially just the opposite of primitive. And thinking back to what primitives are, as I just mentioned, these are basic and simple, whereas non-primitives are more complex and can store more than one value. So now we have a better understanding of data types and the difference between primitive and non-primitive. Let's dive into VS Code and see all of this in action so we can get an even better understanding. Right guys, we're inside VS Code and we'll kick things off looking at the primitives. Now to help us showcase which data type our values are going to be in all of our examples here, we're going to use the type of operator. So we'll just log this in the console and we'll say type of and then when we create our variables, we just write the variable inside of here and it's gonna show us what type of data type that variable is. So we'll kick things off with the string. So we'll just type in here strings. So we'll create a variable here and we'll name this uh, fav sport. And I'll give this a value of football or soccer if you're American. And then we'll create one more variable and we'll say fav team. And my favorite team is Chelsea FC. Shout out to the European champions. Now looking at these two variables here, you can see I've used single quote marks and double quote marks. And this is what's important here regarding strings. To establish a string, you need to use quote marks or backticks. Now the backtick character comes with some extra functionality and won't really be necessary to discuss in this video. So we'll just stick with the basics. So as you can see, we've got a variable with single quote marks and we've also got a variable with double quote marks. So we can put whatever we want in here. We can add a whole bunch of weird special characters, letters, or even numbers. And that's all valid inside of a string. And just to show you guys how both of these quote marks are valid, we're gonna use the type of operator. So first we'll log in fav sport. And as you can see, it's given us the output of string. And then we can do the exact same thing for team. And as you can see, it's returned us the data type of string for single quote marks and the double quote mark. So this just demonstrates how both of the uh, quote marks uh, behave identically. Right, so the next data type we're going to be looking at is the number data type. So we'll go underneath this variable here, add a comment, say number. Now the number data type is as straightforward as it sounds. It's any integer or decimal number created in the language and it's used for money, age and things of that kind of nature. So let's just create a really simple variable here for age. So const insert the integer of 35 or the number of 35. And then let's just log this variable here for the type of and as you can see, it's given us the data type of number and it really is as simple as that. Now, what I can't do here in this variable is add any letters. So if I try to just put in, uh, let's just jumble up some letters. You see the text color is getting all funky and it's throwing us an error. And that's because it's essentially no longer a number. And what I also can't do here is use a comma. So if I try writing 35,000, Again, you can see the colors all funky, and again, it's throwing us an error. Now, what we can do here is add a decimal point. So we can put 3506, and you can see the type of operator is working now. It's not throwing us an error, and it's giving us the data type of number, and that's all we really need to say about the number data type. Now, the next data type we're gonna be looking at is the Boolean data type. Now, a Boolean data type only has two values, true or false. So if we go underneath this number, uh, data type and just create this comment quickly and we'll create a variable called uh, master programmer and we'll set the value to true 
then all we need to do is just log it in the type of operator so master programmer and as you can see it's given us the output of a boolean data type and again we can set this value to false and again it returns us the boolean data type and as i just mentioned when we create a boolean we're simply saying it's true or false so its functionality is essentially just to compare and assess a condition and then give an output of true or false depending on that condition now the next two data types of null and undefined are quite similar and can confuse people that's because both of these data types stand for empty which means that they have no value assigned to them again which is probably why it confuses people but there is one fundamental difference between the two and that is the difference of choice so to show you guys what i mean let's first start off with undefined so we'll just set a comment here of undefined use a let and we'll declare this variable as car and we'll just log this variable here inside of the console and as you can see it's given us a data type of undefined that's because this variable of car here has no value the car variable was declared and created so a storage has been allocated for us to remember this data but because we put no value to this variable it returns undefined so essentially undefined is just the default data type should we forget to initialize our variable now the null data type on the other hand we're actively and consciously making sure we're actually declaring a variable to be empty so to show you guys what i mean i'm just going to give this a value of null and as you can see we're getting the output of null now another thing you should know about the null data type is that if we try to log this into the type of operator so we'll just duplicate this and say type of you can see it's actually given us the object data type now this is actually a bug because object is non-primitive whereas the null data type is a primitive data type so just to make you guys aware of that so that's all there really is to say about the null and undefined data types and again the fundamental difference between the two is choice with null we're actively choosing to give a variable no value Whereas undefined, this is a default data type. Should we forget to give a variable a value? Now the next data type we're gonna be looking at is the big int data type. So we'll just put in here big int. And what big int essentially stands for is big integer. And it's pretty similar to the number data type. However, this deals with numbers on a very large scale. So essentially what you can do with the big int is that you can safely store and operate on large integers, even beyond the safe integer limit for numbers. Now to create a begin, what you need to do is first create a variable. So we're just going to use the const keyword and say big num and set this equal to 54. Now I know this isn't a big integer, but I just want to demonstrate how we can create a big int. So to create the begin, we just need to append an n to the end of the integer or number. Close that off and we'll just get rid of this console log here and we'll do the type of big num. Now, because begin deals with numbers on a very large scale, you're very unlikely to run into this data type. So this explanation is all you need at this point. Now, the last data type we're going to be looking at is the symbol data type. So we'll just go underneath big int and create a comment for symbol. Now, the symbol data type was introduced in ES6 and are completely unique identifiers in JavaScript. Now, to create one, all we need to do is just set another variable. So const and we'll say sim set this to an equal and then what we need to do is use the symbol keyword brackets close that off and then let's just log in the type of operator so sim and as you can see it returns us the symbol data type okay so that's it for the primitive data types now let's move on to the non-primitive data types for which there is only one objects so if you remember back to the beginning of this video we spoke about the difference between primitive and non-primitive data types I explained that primitives are simple and basic and only hold one value, whereas objects on the other hand are more complex and mutable. Now an object data type can be an array, a function or an object itself. So we'll start off with arrays. So the first thing we're going to do is just get rid of the type of operator, go underneath the symbol. And I'm just going to create a comment for the non primitives. And they are objects. And we're looking at the array first. So I'm just going to put a comment here. Now an object array is essentially just a list of different values inside one variable. And to create an array, we first must declare a variable. So we're going to create a variable and we're going to call this messy after the footballer. And then to make this an array, we use uh, square brackets. And then what we can do inside of these square brackets is list all types of values. So we can actually list uh, primitives values in here. So strings, numbers, or booleans. So first we'll just write a string. So messy is a footballer and we'll separate all the values with a comma and we'll insert a number here. So his age, I think he's 34 or might be 35. And then we're gonna say he's the best footballer to ever exist. So we'll create a Boolean for true. And then we can even insert the uh, null data type in here. And you guys can start seeing the major difference between primitive and non-primitive data types. The primitives, if we look up here, only have one value inside each of the variables. But with this array of messy, you can see we have four values in here. 
And if we log this in, so we'll just log in Messi to the console. You can see it gives us the array. Now, if we open up this array and we want to access one of these uh, values, you can see it starts from zero. That's because the base number in JavaScript is actually zero. So our first value is zero and not one. So just to be wary of that, as sometimes this catches people out. So let's just say if we want to access his age, we go inside where we've logged the um, variable of Messi in. We square brackets again. And we'll just put in here one. And as you can see, it's given us his age. If we want to access the first value, we can put in here zero as it's the first value there and it's given us the string of footballer. And that's essentially how we can create an array and access uh, values inside of that array. Now we will look at arrays in much greater detail in subsequent videos as there is much more to learn with arrays. Now another object data type is a function. So let's just create a really quick function underneath this array. So we'll say function and we'll call this function, let's call it the classic hello world and then parentheses and then square brackets and then inside this function this is really basic so we'll just uh, console log this string of hello now underneath this function i'm going to invoke it and the way we do that is we write the function name first so the function name of this is hello world and then the way we actually invoke this function is with the parentheses straight after the function name so we insert the parentheses there and as you can see we're getting the string of hello there and that is essentially the function in JavaScript, a really, really basic function. And again, like arrays, I will have a video devoted specifically to functions as there is much more to learn about functions. And then finally, we have objects themselves in which we can store many values inside. So uh, we'll just comment out this stuff here. And let's go underneath all of this and let's create the object first. So we're going to call this object uh, Ferrari and we'll set the equals to and then inside of these curly braces we insert named value pairs so first we're going to say type we're going to say a string of race car comma and then we'll also have speed we'll say about 210 and we can also do the color so we'll say red and then finally we can just say fast so we can insert a boolean so we'll say true and then what we can do here is just log this in our console so we'll log in the ferrari and you'll see our object there now if we want to see any of these values so say we want to see what the speed is we can say dot speed and as you can see it's given us the 210 if we want to see the color we can say uh, color and it will give us the string of red so the key thing to remember here is that objects store named value pairs and again, like array and functions, object will have a video devoted to it too. So to summarize guys, the JavaScript has different data types which we can store values in. These data types can be categorized as primitive and non-primitives with seven primitive data types and one non-primitive data type being the object data types. Primitives hold single basic values, whereas non-primitives hold multiple and complex values. So that's gonna be it for this video guys. If you like the content, please hit the like button and please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.